Okay. Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to another session of Talk Live. My name is Annika Norden, and I am a customer success engineer here at Entopology. And today, we are going to be looking at creating conformal um, liners for helmets. And so this is a pretty cool workflow um, because it allows you to use multiple faces and also a one of our new latticing features to create a nice conformal liner um, that you can then use to um, that you can then use some simulation data to to drive um, for um, impact. And so let's just dive right into it. This is the finished file, but we're going to be building this up together. Um, but starting with a just some inner and outer faces, um, we are going to create this nice um, conformal lattice here. So let me pull this to the side and we're going to start with this face here. Um, so, sorry, this body here. So this uh, is just a nice helmet that I grabbed off of GrabCAD. Um, but with this helmet, I have these inner and I have these outer faces. And so in this case, as you can see by the parentheses that I have here, we actually have three inner faces and five outer faces. Um, and so for those who have worked in NTOP before, we do have this conformal lattice from and between CAD faces block. Um, however, if you have single faces, that works great. If you have multiple faces, you'll see that that UV parameterization um, and kind of how we're working with that isn't going to be as smooth. But we do have a new function that allows us to bring in multiple faces um, and generate a nice conformal lattice from there. So the first thing that I'm going to do is actually stitch together these faces. So if I grab a stitch adjacent CAD faces block, I'm going to grab actually two of those. And then I'm going to delete these pre-populated lists because um, in NPAP we can't have lists of lists and this list is already here. Um, so let's pop these right into here. So we have our inner and outer faces. Um, I'm going to make this a variable. Let's call this stitched inner. Oops, spelled that wrong. And right click, make variable, double click the statement, uh, change the name. This is going to be our stitched outer. So we have inner and outer faces. We're going to do a couple things with each of those. So first, I'm going to actually make this outer face into an implicit body. Um, I'll explain why in just a little bit, but let's just let that run for a little as I talk about what we're doing with the inner. So I'm going to make that into an implicit and give it a bit of thickness. Um, but we'll go back to that one while that's running. As far as the inner, I'm going to grab a mesh from CAD body because what we need here is a quad mesh. So stitched inner, let's bring that over here to create a mesh from CAD body. And this might just take a second because we're running that um, body over here. Oh, and I'm also on highest res. Let me bump down to low res so that can act a little bit faster for us. Um, but here we see we've got that inner mesh. Um, you see this is pretty fine mesh because we've got some nice um, curvature here. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab onto a quadrangulate mesh block. And so what's going to happen here is I can bring in a mesh, I can define a target panel, and this block is going to try and lay about 1,000, because that's my target, quads um, on this mesh here. So let's just give that a second to run. I'm going to right click, make this a variable, call this my inner mesh. So as you see here, we have all of these nice quads. That's actually what each of um, this is going to be the base of each of our unit cells because uh, with the block that we're using. Um, so let's bring that into our block. So it's going to be a lattice body from quad mesh block. And so this is part of our new latticing framework where uh, we are defining a unit cell. We're defining a surface mesh, in this case, our quad mesh. So let me just drag that right in there. Um, as well as the offset, the layer count, and a thickness. So for the unit cell, 
If I double click in here, we see my different options. I'm just gonna go with the graph unit cell. Let's keep it pretty simple, maybe try body centered cubic. There you see we've got um, that little preview that popped up over here, but I'm gonna turn that off for now. And so as far as our offset, I'm going to do a negative offset. Um, as you can see, we've got this gray on this side of the mesh and the black on that side of the mesh. So this means that this is the positive side, this is the negative side. If I want my lattice going outwards, then I'm gonna go from, I have to go into the negative space. So if I just were to do a negative 10 offset with maybe just one layer and let's try one millimeter thickness, this is gonna look a little bit funky just because I'm on low risk. So I'm actually gonna pull out this beam lattice so we can see a nice clean preview of it. So for what I did there, this is the unthickened version of it. So I have a, so it renders pretty quickly for me. But we can see now that we have that constant 10 millimeter offset. However, if I wanna make sure that it's fully reaches that outer face um, and fully conforms to whatever uh, curvature I have along that face, um, I can drive this with a field. So as we see with this icon here, we've got that little field icon. So anytime we see that field icon, we can get excited because that means we can drive it with some sort of field or some sort of implicit body. And for those who are familiar with NTOP, we know that implicit bodies are actually fields in themselves. So let's take a peek at this um, outer, this um, implicit that we created before. Uh, it's done loading, so I'm gonna make this a variable, and this is actually going to be our outer implicit. So here you see, we, we've done something with our inner, we've made it a mesh. We've done something with our outer, and we've actually made it into a field. And so if I look at this head on, and if I hit F for my field viewer, then we can see the field of this implicit. I'm gonna turn that visibility off so we can see what's going on here. You can see if I probe values, then this is actually a distance field um, that we see in the background, where right on this, what we see as the surface, our field equals zero. And as you move away, we're moving into the positive space. And actually, as we're entering that field, right, I added that two millimeter thickness, we're going into the negative space. So if we look at the base of my quad mesh, and if I have this probe values on, so we see the values, when I go right onto that surface where, where, the, where I have that quad mesh and therefore the base of my lattice, you see we've got that exact distance from that um, outer layer. And so that means that I can use this field to drive that offset so we can make sure that it's always conformal. So if I go over here, you see it's about 24 millimeters away you see here, it looks pretty consistent, but it might not be. There might be, it might be a little bit closer over here. So if I go here, then we're around, still around 23, 24, but we wanna make sure that it's totally conformal. And also if we're bringing in another helmet type where maybe the edges end up a little bit closer, we wanna be able to read that in. So this, again, a field in itself, this implicit. Um, I am gonna do a couple of things to make sure that we can use it properly as an offset. Um, with our offsets, we it either has to be fully positive or fully negative. We can't cross over zero. So the first thing that I'm going to do is actually clamp this value so I can bring in that outer implicit, clamp it between zero and let's just say 100. That zero is so that I have nothing in the negative space. That 100 is just a ballpark range um, that I know we're not going to be surpassing anyway. This max really doesn't matter in this case. Um, but I'm also going to use the multiply block so that I can multiply it by negative one because remember we have to do a negative offset because of the orientation of this mesh. So here I am just dragging and dropping this into the offset. And if I turn on this visibility again, then we see we have um, that nice conformal that should fit properly to our outer surface. So if I have that on. Also, you'll notice some weird rings happening. That's just happening because I'm in low res right now. I'm moving quickly through this workflow, but I'm gonna hit X for a section cut. Um, also, let's change the color of this so it's a little bit easier to differentiate. And now you can see that we're, we're 
a little into there because I've got a thickness happening. Um, but we can see that we're indeed conformal all the way around here because of this lattice body from quad mesh. So again, using that lattice body from quad mesh, using that quad mesh as the base, to then send it all the way up because we're, we're using that outer field. So again, we're starting with multiple CAD faces for both the inner and the outer faces. We're stitching them together so that we can create a mesh on the bottom that's driven by the implicit on top. So talking through it, we've got a lot of different types happening right now, um, but uh, we can play around with things from there. So for example, maybe I want a couple more layers. I can put this up to three and you can see now we have this nice X happening because we're working with that body center cubic. Um, but I'm gonna put it back down to one. Um, I'm gonna show off another exciting um, block that we have. So we played with the graphic unit before. If I double click in here, we see some other options. We do have this custom implicit unit cell. And so with the custom implicit unit cell, this means that we can have totally custom unit cells, right? So we, anything that we generate within NPOP that's in implicit body or anything that we bring in from some external software and turn into an implicit, we can use as its own custom unit cell. So if we're talking about like some impact absorbers, I already have this um, little geometry. Oh, let's turn off the section cut that I've got in here. This was something that was made in CAD. Um, it could be something made anywhere uh, or made completely within the software. Um, but what I'm going to do, I'm going to double click and turn that into an implicit body. So this is our, I'm going to call it an absorber. So we've got our absorber. Um, let's bring this down here so we have everything nice and organized. Um, we have our absorber. That's going to be my body. As far as the unit cell domain, this is the space that we're defining um, that's going to populate our, our lattice. So I'm just gonna keep it nice and simple. I'm gonna go into the properties of the absorber and grab onto this bounding box to mark my unit cell domain. Actually, let me bring this out so we can take a peek. So you see, we've got this nice bounding box on my part here. So that this means that this is going to be the frame that we're using to then populate that unit cell. So um, if I wanted these, I, I could, if I were to make the bounding box a little bit bigger, then our little absorbers would end up being smaller, right? Because we're using that frame that's been created from this quad mesh um, to then populate. But let's keep it nice and simple and let's just drag that bounding box right into that unit cell domain. Um, I'm going to bump up my resolution. So this might take a second to render. Um, but right now what's happening is we've created that custom implicit unit cell from an um, imported CAD part. And now we're gonna populate that same exact um, lattice body with the, that CAD part. So it'll just take a second here. And we can see what that looks like. Yep, now that we're in high res, it takes a little bit longer, but worth it so we can see how pretty our geometry is. Let's see, I'm gonna do a little bit of cleanup. So this is our informal lattice. Let's just bring this guy down here too. All right, and there we have it. So that little geometry that we started with 
is now um, being used to pretty quickly populate this whole entire volume. We still have that conformal um, and normal um, direction going from there to fill in those two spaces. So pretty cool to see. Um, I think from there, there, there's a lot that we could do. We could maybe do some shelling operations or bring in some simulation to drive the thickness of it, maybe have some offset depending on where we want those strong impact regions. Um, but another thing that's really exciting about this is I've created this nice little workflow. I have um, some defined variables, but we can very simply swap some of these out. So I have this other imported part here, a nice bike helmet that I also grabbed off of GrabCAD. You'll see here, I already defined um, both the outer and the inner faces, again, working with multiple faces here. But what I can do is if I actually empty out these variables by just dragging and dropping. So now we see we have these open variable containers. A lot of things turn blue because they're waiting for another input. But I'm actually gonna bring my outer bike faces in here, bring my inner bike faces in here, and that whole entire workflow is going to run through so that I can fill up that volume nicely. So actually, before we run into there, I'm gonna swap back out from my body center cubic. So then we can just look, and now we already have this um, volume ready to go. And so uh, some of the areas that we're seeing here, that's just due to this quad mesh that we started out with. Um, so we might have to play around with these inputs a little bit um, to make sure it's nice and clean, but just by quickly swapping out, oops, we don't want that one, let's look at this one. Just by quickly swapping out the inputs of those faces, we have a whole entire different helmet that's still completely conformal um, and uh, quickly using this lattice body from quad mesh to, to generate that from there. From here, we could do a lot of different things. We could give this a nice shell, um, merge things together to, to clean it up. Um, bring in some simulation data to um, thicken our lattices depending on where we want that, uh, where we have those high impact regions. Um, but yeah, that's about it for my workflow today, really focusing on this lad body, lattice body from quad mesh and making use of all of these different body types so that we can create a nice conformal lattice um, for a helmet liner. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Um, again, my name is Annika and I hope to be working with some of you soon.